Hey there, Bakugan fans! Welcome back to Bakumentary, your go-to show for competitive Bakugan Battle Planet news, gameplay, meta reports, and more. I'm your host, Robo Sensei, and on today's episode, we will be revisiting a mechanic which has been written off as pretty much useless until recently, which is Frost Strike. The ruling for Frost Strike says Bakugan with Frost Strike increases the energy an opponent must play for flip cards. The amount of energy that the opponent must pay extra is equal to the amount of Frost Strike the attacking Bakugan has. This ruling is still true and reads the same, however, we have previously been told that if a flip card stated an alternate condition was met, the card could be played for free. This appeared on the cards Pact of Darkness, Stand Together, Fierce Termination, and Tiger Reflex. Prior to Momocon 2019, we had been told that the free written on these cards was not overruled by Frost Strike and could always be played for the cost of zero energy if their conditions were met. During Momocon, however, several brawlers discovered firsthand from the words of the lead game designer Justin Gary that if a Bakugan had any amount of Frost Strike, it would in fact increase the cost of flip cards that had been played for free. Considering that these free flips are the only ones currently being suggested as competitively viable, this new understanding of Frost Strike could change up the game in a very chilling way. Today, we will be giving a second opinion to any character cards or evos from Battle Brawlers and Resurgence with Frost Strike. Starting off with our first character card in Battle Brawlers, we have Aqua Cyndius Ultra. He's got 304 and 1 Frost Strike. At first glance, it seems pretty weak. With only 300 be the start, the Frost Strike isn't going to help if it can't win the battle for the turn, so not very good to start out with. Aqua's Titan Cyndius Ultra is a bit better of a card with 1005 and costing 5 energy. This Evo also has 3 Frost Strike and says if you play 2 or more cards in a turn, this gets plus 5 DR. With the card at a cost of 5, it could really only be playable with something like Super Fuel, reducing its cost by 3, but even then, you're still only sitting at 1000 B. Having 3 Frost Strike, unfortunately, I do not believe will bring Aqua Sinius Ultra into a playable position. Next up, we have Aquas Nilius Core, with 304, and says that on the Magic Shield, it gets plus 200 B and plus 2 Frost Strike. Even with the same stats, I am already liking it better than Cyndius Ultra because for one, it comes with way better cores, packing MS and SD. Although you may not land on the right core, I can say that this is a much better choice. Uh, it's Evo Aquas Titanilius, who also costs 5 energy and is brought up to 908, keeping the same magic shield effect while also allowing it to be re-rolled once per turn if you miss. Again, costing 5, this is really only realistically playable with Super Fuel, which you would in case that the only deck I would really want to play this in is Chaos Titan Nilius, which is already playing Pyrus anyway. But we will be getting two much better Aquas Magic Shield Bakugan later in the forms of Aquas Cubo and Aquas Pyravian Ultra. Uh, if those Bakugan's Evos aren't very good, I may come back to Aquas Nilius in the future. Moving on, we have possibly the worst Bakugan to go over, and possibly the worst Bakugan in the game, Aqua Serpentis Ultra. He's got 105 with 2 Frost Strike, and that is just beyond unplayable in my eyes. Uh, nothing else to look at here until we go over our Evos, starting with Aqua's Hyper Serpentis Ultra. Another 5 cost Evo brings him up to 508 with 3 Frost Strike. Uh, nothing about this is good at all, honestly, and the Diamond Evo isn't much better, sitting at 707 with 7 Frost Strike for 7 energy. The only time I would consider using this Bakugan would be just to have a, the base form and drop a Midas Sinius or Mac, but even then that's just not worth building around. Next we have Aquas Tritonium Core with 502, who gets 2 Frost Strike on a Shield Core, which he packs 2 of. Personally, I like him a bit better than Aquas Hydorus Ultra for a deck like Mono Aquas, since he has higher B and Frost Strike, and has a more manageable Evo being Aquas Hyper Tritonium, costing 3 energy, bringing it up to 804, and bumping the Frost Strike shield bonus up to 4, pretty much putting any flip out of playable range. Now 800 is a little bit low for a 3 cost Evo to cap out at, but this would only be really played in Mono Aquas, which would have a lot of cheap and powerful cards like Flooding Waters and Tides to bring his numbers up pretty quick. Overall, I'd say he's considerable to play, but only in a specific deck. Next is another Tritonium Core, this time in Orlis. He sits at 206 and packs MS and FF. On a Magic Shield, he gets Shadow Strike, and on a Flaming Fist, he gets 2 Frost Strike. I might like this Bakugan a little bit more if the core abilities were switched around. In order to get your Frost Strike, you have to land on a Flaming Fist Core, which would only put you at 450B at the highest. However, that does bring you up to 9 or possibly 12 DR, which could lead into some Might or Mac plays. 
His Evo Auralis Titan Tertonium doesn't really fix his B-Power issue, only bumping his stats up to 610, keeping the same MS effect, and bringing the FF effect to 3 Frost Strike. Overlooking the entirety of this Evo, I couldn't recommend playing it simply because it has the same cores, energy cost, damage rating, and lower B than Auralis Titan Dragonoid Ultra, who by default has the ability of being all factions at once, effectively having infinite Frost Strike due to its ruling. Up next is Chaos Hydorus Core with 203 and 1 Frost Strike. Pretty much in the same badness level with Aqua Serpentis Ultra having barely any B power. Chaos Hyper Hydorus still won't make him any better, costing 3 energy and only bringing us up to 606 with 2 Frost Strike. While having a much more manageable Evo than Aqua Serpentis Ultra, it still has a very lackluster end result that keeps this Bakugan in an unplayable state. Our last character card from Battle Brawlers is Chaos Trox Core, with Magic Shield Helix and 303, gaining 3 Frost Strike on the Magic Shield Core. He's a bit low to start with when compared with the best Magic Shield Chaos Bakugan, Chaos Nelius Core. On an MS Core, you'll only really be dealing 3 damage, which isn't too scary to not be able to stop. Chaos Titan Trox doesn't do much for this Bakugan, having a tremendous energy cost of 6, being relatively unplayable, and only having a stat line of 1008 with 5 Frost Strike on a Magic Shield. Frost Strike aside, this is just a much worse Chaos Magic Shield Bakugan compared to anything else that's already out there, especially Chaos Nelius Core. Our first Bakugan with only an Evo to have Frost Strike is Aquas Hyper Krakelios Ultra, which has already been an established member in the Fist decks with Chaos Pegatrix and Auralis Pegatrix. Uh, this Evo only costs 2 energy and has a stat line of 704, while also giving a 300B bonus on a Fist Core. It also says that when you play this, you get to give a Bakugan plus 2 DR and plus 2 Frost Strike. This is a pretty good Evo to play not only to level up your Bakugan, but to add extra bonuses on a turn you might really need them, such as giving Frost Strike right at the time to close out the game with a team attack. With the new Evo ruling I will be covering in another video, you can play any Evo on top of a character card or other Evo as long as it goes to the right Bakugan. This means that even if you've already evolved into Aquas Hyper Kikelios Ultra, you can still play the Evo down again to receive its bonus once more. I would say that this is by far the most playable out of any character card or Evo that guarantees Frost Strike. The rest of the character cards that have Frost Strike are either unreleased or do not yet have Evos, so I wouldn't want to judge those cards since we can't really play with them yet. Overall, I would have to say that the fact that Frost Strike working on free flips is a great change, however, the character cards and Evos that make use of Frost Strike are still not that great, save for just a few. And this is how I would organize them, going from playable to just okay to bad. And I would put Hyper Kukelios on top because it's already good. Um, I would put Titanilius in okay because there are a few things that might outclass it in the future, but for right now it's the best option if you want Aquas in House Titanilius. And I would also put Aquas Hyper Tritonium Core in okay, because um, it could be good in Mono Aquas if there aren't better options, which there probably are with Aquas Cubo coming out. Um, and bad, we have Titan Sinius Ultra, Chaos Hydorus, uh, Titan Trox, Orlus Tritonium, uh, Aquas Serpentis Ultra, and Diamond Serpentis Ultra. They're just... you can't really do much with them. Sinius is at the top of bad, but not quite in okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I've been really excited to make this video and I'm glad I was finally able to get around to it. Stay tuned for more insightful Bakugan content in the near future for part 2 of the Frost Strike discussion, while we'll go into detail about action cards, hero cards, and Bakukoras that can grant Frost Strike to your Bakugan.